All right, welcome to video number two on the Know, Like, and Trust series that we're doing. Just to reiterate for you real quick, this is so incredibly important because these all three need to happen in order for somebody to buy from you, especially large purchases, right? They need to know you, they need to like you, and then they need to trust you. And so it's one thing for people to know you, it's a whole other thing for people to like you. How many people do you know that you just don't like? But I wanna to talk to you today about if you're selling a product, right? If you're a woodworker or a handmade business owner and you're selling a product how do you get the people that you're selling to to know you we talked about that in video number one here's a link back to video number one right up here the second thing is they need to like you so who do people tend to like they tend to like people just like them you know, we talk a lot about in society about being more inclusive and not having preferences about the different people that we spend time with, but it just doesn't make sense. Listen, people have had preferences for thousands of years, right? We prefer people like us. As much as we want to say that we don't, we prefer people that speak the same language that we speak. If I'm hanging out with people that speak Japanese, I literally don't know what they're saying. It's not that I don't want to prefer them. It's just that I'm going to have a much easier time getting along with somebody that I can understand what they're communicating. People that have the same values, the same same beliefs. I'm going to align with those people more and that's okay. And people that you're selling to have those same thoughts and same beliefs. Okay. They tend to like people just like them. So that's why it's really difficult sometimes in business. If you're not scratching your own itch, if you're trying to build a brand or build a product base that serves an audience that's different from yourself. Like for me, let's say that I came out with fitness apparel for women. I'm not a woman. I don't know what they need. I don't know what they value in that realm. So could I be successful? Maybe, but I'm going to be much more successful coming up with products or services that are going to resonate with people like me. I'm a family man. I love the Lord. I love my family. I have a set of values around those things. And so when we build custom tables, we communicate those values that are going to resonate with people like us. How do I get prospects to like me and my company? This is the question that we're trying to answer here. Now that they know me, because I have an established marketing channel, again, you go back to video number one if you haven't seen that. Now that they know me, how do I get them to like me? So number one, one of the best ways to get them to like you is to share more of your face. Yes, your face. People need to see that there's a face behind the brand. People need to see that this is not some anonymous company that nobody knows. They need to see a face. And this is especially important in the handmade and woodworking industries and niches. They need to know you. What does this look like from a very practical level? This means that you just post a picture with some of your products every once in a while. This means that you do stories once a week that you say, hey, this is Zach with Iron by Iron Woodworks. Wanted to give you a quick tour of the shop and let you know what we got going on this week. We're working on this and here we're working on this and here we're working on this. People just need to see your face. Number two, you need to share more of your story. So if you have a story that's gonna resonate with your audience, you should share that story. You should share why it would resonate. Listen, why are there so many successful veteran-owned businesses? Because they talk about it, right? And veterans buy from veterans. They want to support veteran-owned businesses. There's so many examples of this. Women-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses. If there is something unique about you or unique about your story or unique about how you got to where you're at today, you should share that story. You should write posts about it. You should do videos about it. People should be able to understand how you got to where you are and why you're there, okay? Number three, you should share more of your family. A lot of you guys are like, I'm not talking about or sharing my family. That's private. I don't want to do that. Well, listen, you can have that belief if all that you want and you can do it. And there are businesses that they don't talk about their family at all. There are people that don't talk about their family at all. But in my experience, I have seen that if you share about your children, share about your kids, about your parents, your grandparents, share about your family, what you love, what you believe in when it comes to family, that is going to resonate with your audience in a major way, especially if what you're trying to sell has anything to do at all with family. Now, if you're selling underwear, why do you need to talk about your family? You don't. But if you're selling dining tables, there's a family element to a table or furniture where they're building a home and they're trying to put furniture in it that their family would love and that would create an aesthetic. That is important to talk about your family. So talk about your family. Share more about your family. Number four is share more about your mission. So why are you doing what you're doing? Listen, all of us are here because we are trying to create a profit, right? We're trying to make money, but that cannot be the only reason that you're doing this. You have to find a bigger why than just, I'm trying to make a load of money. Because number one, people don't resonate with that. And number two, that's not a good enough why for you to keep going when things get really hard. Trust me, like if you're running a business, you will have bad seasons. The good seasons are great. The bad seasons are terrible. You just have to have a bigger why than I'm just trying to make a bunch of money. 
okay? Number five, fifth and final one here, is you need to share more of your values. If you share more of your face, more of your story, more of your family, more of your mission, and more of your values, what you value, what you believe in, what you stand for, people that are like you will be attracted to you. And so, no like, and trust. This is video number two on no like, and trust. This is covering how do we close the like gap. And that is by sharing more of our face, more of our family, more of our story, more of our mission, more of our values. And so, if you need help with this, I want to encourage you, check out the free resources below. I've got a free ebook. I've got the Handmade Hero Academy online course, which is incredible. It's super inexpensive to get into. will help you tremendously. And then number three, if you are a woodworker trying to scale to that 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollar mark, you should check out the Woodworking Business Accelerator program. With that being said, we're gonna dive into video number three. We got a link to it right up here for how do you close the trust gap with your potential clients? Let's dive in.